Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your Gaming Monk for the evening. I've said before that the best way to experience D&D is outside of D&D, and one of the best representatives of this is 13th Age. Now, I've already reviewed both it and its expansion 13 True Ways, and I stand by my comments in those reviews. Today, we'll be looking at a couple expansions from Martin Kilman. The first is Dark Alleys and Twisted Paths, and the second is Dark Packs and Ancient Secrets. In the interest of full disclosure, I was sent a review copy of both books, but as always, that will not play a factor on my take. As a final note, if you haven't seen my reviews on 13th Age and 13 True Ways, I'd recommend looking at those because I'll be referencing the classes and other materials in both of those books. With that said, let's get started with the first one of the two, Dark Alleys and Twisted Paths. Now, I'll be referring to it as Dark Alleys from here on for the sake of my sanity. This is an expansion to the classes from the main two books, and we'll go over each and cover some of the highlights. First, the Barbarian. Despite the Barbarian being one of the simpler classes with its complexity based on talents, plenty of the talents at all three tiers here introduce their own complexities. What I especially like is the text before each talent list that hints at what talents would be good fits for certain combat styles and themes. The only one I'm iffing about is Raging Revenant. I think it's due to the fact that you can't start with it. It's not a bad idea, and I understand why, it just kind of bugs me for a reason I don't fully grasp. The Bard's talents within the books are rooted more on themes than fighting styles, with a lot of them focused on the particular feel of the Bard more than anything else. The Battle Cries aiming more on tricksters is going to be a mileage may vary affair, based on the feel of the Bard in question. I would note that Living Melody's talent to be able to leave the Material Plane in return is interesting, and one that I could see getting some abuse from the more canny of players. Chaos Mage is still the ultimate at your own risk. I've always been iffy on the stone-based mechanic for this class, and that doesn't change too much here. Though I do like the talents based on warp paths, as well as the more multi-class talents that'd be an easy fit for the Chaos Mage. That said, my favorite talent in these is Chaos Knight for those who like to get a little bit of gish in their craziness. Clerics still live and die on their domain talents for the most part. But while there were spells for clerics in the original book, sometimes the spell list didn't quite fit the domain. Dark Alleys addresses this through the inclusion of domain spells. And I can certainly see f some finding this limited, but I like this approach because it helps clerics branch out out of the holy warrior stereotype that they are often stuck with. Certainly helps that there's a chart that lists associated spells for each. Of course, there's still spells for all domains, so everyone wins out on providing options. I like the inclusion of rituals here as well, since rituals were something that was kind of hand-wavy in the main book. Commanders have champion tier talents now. And spoiler warning, they're not the only one getting this. And it's a welcome addition. Much like the Bard, the included talents are leaning towards certain backgrounds rather than combat styles asking and answering the question, what kind of leader are you? In an interesting twist, I like that some of the tactics are available once per battle instead of having a 16 plus recharge roll. Gives some variety to the approach. Druid is still a monstrosity, but at least a saner one with the new circles features. Taking some cues from the demonologist by having tiers of initiate, adept, and master instead of just initiate and adept. It's a more unified approach as opposed to the half-dozen subclasses that were in 13 True Ways. Now most of the paths within 13 True Ways' as Druid are repurposed into circles with this new approach, along with a couple new ones. It's a nice cleanup that I like more than the original Druid, and I liked the original Druid. The Fighter also gets champion tier talents, which I approve of. Most of the talents are rooted in combat style, which you might expect. However, the only one I don't like outside of its feet is Weapon Specialization. Mostly because I feel like plus one to attack isn't going to have as much of an impact compared to some of the other talents. The Monk is another favorite of mine that has a new keyword it works with called Cycle Bonus. This is a bonus that you get for full attack cycles, and it's a nice way to reward cycles within the attack trinity monks are based on. We also have a few more of the Seven Deadly Secrets instead of having them be Enigmas. And I know I've ranted about ninjas being a monk subclass in D&D 5th edition, but the ninjutsu talent in the monk is an exception, mostly because I feel like it's a dip into the rogue class as it should be. 
That said, I wish more forms took advantage of the Psycho bonus, as I feel like that's got room for expansion. The Necromancer is a class I mostly like, except for the Wasting Away feature, which I've never been a fan of. Fortunately, here there's some talents to make that a little less of an issue, along with some aspects of blood magic that allow for a more vampiric spin on Necromancers, which, of course, I approve of. Not all Necromancers should be the frail, gray-haired stereotype. Occultists are still talent-centric, and the new talents aid in pushing the setup towards certain styles, such as Knight of the Purple Gate giving a defensive edge. However, talents like Air of Exuberance take the pillars of the occultist and turn it on its head. Additionally, there's champion talents to throw in the occultist's sizable pool. Paladins in vanilla were always a little undercooked to me, caught between a rock and a hard place. Dark Alleys addresses this by expanding Smite into having a set of Smite powers which also reworks its feat benefits. Because of this, plenty of Paladin talents gain Smite powers in addition to their flexibility. Beyond that, there's a new batch of talents along with Champion and Epic tier talents. Now, the Ranger in Vanilla was also one of those talent-based ones that I felt could use something more. The Ranger's still talent-based, but one of the attempts in Dark Alleys to mix things up is through Arcane Archer. It works kind of like a druid talent in 13 True Ways. It grants a number of charges based on Wisdom modifier, with most arcane powers requiring one charge and the 5th level ones requiring two. The Initiate and Adept versions of this talent um, determine how many arcane powers that one can access. And of course, there's the inclusion of Champion and Epic tier talents as well. Rogues have a bevy of new talents, as well as a new keyword, Shadow. This marks the more supernaturally inclined setups that hint at a connection to a shadow plane or some equivalent, based on how you want to work it within your setting. It should be noted that going down that road is charisma-based, which honestly makes sense. Sorcerers have one of their main pillars expanded. Now, vanilla sorcerers had heritage talents, which are developed into sorcerer bloodlines here. These are subclasses unto themselves and replace several of the features that their default had. In addition, some abilities have an empowered effect, which works similarly to the original Gather Power. And of course, lastly, metamagic and sorcery points are introduced, the latter of which being based on charisma. Each bloodline has a Gather Power benefit, a pool of metamagic abilities, and an associated spell list. There's also a handful of new and revised talents introduced, some introducing more metamagic options. The final class is the Wizard. Dark Alleys reintroduces the classical eight spheres of magic. In addition, a variant version of wizard is introduced that acts as a specialist of a given sphere. Essentially, they're really good at one sphere and cannot use any spells from another. Beyond that, there's a decent amount of new talents and spells. There's already a kind of peaks and valleys thing at work with dark alleys in what it does with classes. Some merely expand on what was already there, while a few introduce brand new avenues and mechanics to classes. In particular, clerics, druids, paladins, rangers, sorcerers, and wizards almost become whole new classes with what's added. It definitely helps them venture out from some of the more unfortunate stereotypes encouraged by the big two. I like that there's a set of suggestions for what playstyles would benefit the new talent at each tier, but I do wish the same thing was afforded to spells or spell equivalents. However, this is only the first part. I think it's high time we covered Dark Pact and Ancient Secrets. Now, Dark Pacts, again shortened for the sake of my sanity, introduces six new classes, and I'll be delving into each. There's also a set of talents, but they're largely rooted in the classes here to allow for other classes to dip into them. The first of these is the Abomination, working on the trope of a character who turns into a monster or takes on monstrous aspects. So, Hulk, Vincent Valentine, Claymore, you get the idea. It has some motifs with the fighter, due to having its flexible attack maneuvers, albeit with a few twists. First, the native element feature grants resist 11 plus to that element, increasing by 1 for each level after the first. This ties into your pool of maneuvers, as your chosen element grants an extra maneuver that activates on a natural 20. In addition, you have natural melee weapons and a spit attack at range that uses constitution. Second is the Fate Weaver, which is more of a support class that treats the battlefield like a chess match with its pulling on the strings of, well, Fate. Fate Weaver's abilities are split into two forms, Spells and Meditations. The latter are per-battle spells that provide an effect alongside Focus. 
in some ways similar to the sorcerer's gather power. This focus can be expended on some spells to amplify their effects. The Scion is our third class, and is a 13th age spin on the always debatable Psychic. In a similar vein to Arcane Spheres, Scions have their effects split into six disciplines. Clairsentience, Metacreation, Energenesis, Psychometabolism, Psychoportation, and Telepathy. As a result, Scions can be a very diverse class that can fit multiple roles. However, manifesting psionic powers requires power points, having both an initial cost as well as augmentations that can be activated at an additional cost. So, it's not for beginner players. Fourth is the Savage, which has some commonality with the Barbarian, but is not as talent-centric as it is. Instead of raging, Savages have Frenzy Dice and Frenzy Powers. This acts as a momentum-based system where hits add Frenzy Die up to a pool at a certain point. The die type and the maximum are based on your level. Now these can be spent on some healing. The first time it's used expends a recovery, so keep that in mind. But it can also be used on Frenzy Powers. Some powers and talents use Frenzy as a damage die, akin to how weapon is used typically. It reminds me in a weird way of the maneuver system that D&D next abandoned. Fifth is Sword Mage, which presents itself more akin to the Sword Mage in D&D 4th edition than anything else. The first part of this is the Sigils, which work alongside the Mark and Punish dichotomy that many of the Defender role classes in 4th edition had. Here, you may use Mark with Sigil to force the target to focus on you, and when it doesn't, you can use a Sigil effect as an interrupt. And while they do have their own host of spells, at 3rd level onward, you have the option to take spells from the Wizards list at 2 levels lower. Finally, the Warlock is a caster that uses a kind of spell trinity between damaging blasts, debuffing curses, and varied hexes. Unlike other casting classes, all of the spells from Warlocks are at will. True to its name, every Warlock starts with one of the nine packs, which grants its own bonuses and its own effect. However, there's still a game of which you can prioritize, since you start with four spells, plus one for each level after the first, so... You can't have an even spread among all three spell types. Now, a further nice touch with each of these classes is the sections on rifts and variations. These allow for different spins on the classes presented in order to not get shoehorned within one setup. This, I feel, is at the crux of why I chose to cover both of these books. Author Martin Kildman shows a deep understanding about what makes 13th Age work. The ability to have a single class or build fulfill a great many roles, or a single role in multiple ways, i.e. variety is the spice of life. Both of them are excellent additions to the system, but as for which I'd be more willing to recommend, I'd say it all depends on what you're asking for. If you want new spins on what's already in the main two books, go with Dark Alleys. If you want some new experiences, go for Dark Pacts. If you can get both in the bundle, do that. At the end of the day, it goes to show that a talent system will have far more fun than a subclass system you're stuck in.